Hello anybody, this is Blender Pretender, playing with Blender and posting it once again for the weekly post. Rather, this is a few days past the weekly post, uh, a due date, which I usually try to do on Sundays. Um, today I'm working with Blender 2.8. I have downloaded this earlier this evening. Today is uh, December the 18th. Uh, here's the date from uh, the download uh, version and all that. I'm going to choose Write and Tools because that's what I'm used to. Right click select and the tools. This is a, the brand new splash screen. I've already taken the time to reset and do the load the factory settings for this uh, Blender installation earlier before starting the recording. So I should be set to go right now uh, with this um, with uh, with the um, working in this new uh, Blender version. Um, I'm going to open a file that I've been working with. The 16th, which was Sunday, I tried to work on the file that I've been working with mostly, which is the uh, the scene where I'm setting all these little condiments, I guess, uh, for the uh, for that table, uh, like a restaurant scene. And this is where I'm exploring the Blender you know, the new Blender 2.8 options. Blender has evolved more than I have <laughs> developed this scene since I started doing this using Blender 2.8. So this scene has been wholly created with Blender 2.8, uh, starting from when it was really crashing and having lots of problems to where it's now more stable, even though uh, this last Sunday I didn't record because it was crashing on me um, when I tried to do this work with the scene. One of the things that uh, this last Sunday it uh, had difficulty with was the undo function with the file, this file here that I've been basically carrying now for, you know, trying to develop now for a while. I just put it in the render view there in the shading tab and I went back to the layout tab so I can show it. So anyway, today I'm going to work on more modeling. Um, I have, since the last time I worked with Blender 2.8 on this very same scene, I had completed this salt shaker off of a reference. It's a green color, that's because the reference is a, a green color, but I'm going to change the color eventually. Um, you know, I'm going to play a lot with the colors here because they don't they don't really go together. Um, but for now it's more modeling. Um, I think uh, I wanted to get into doing some texture paint, in other words just making these top of the saw shakers look like they're used. Um, you know, adding uh, the shininess and the roughness, like a map and stuff like that, using texture paint. But it wasn't working on Sunday, and I don't think I want to do that right now. It's a weekday, so I'm going to stick to what I know, which is the modeling. And today I'm going to model a um, um, a holder. I just went online, I looked for a holder. A lot of the restaurants, they have a holder. I know that I started initially trying to think that I was going to make a restaurant look like a, uh, you know, like an older restaurant right now is pretty much turning out to be whatever it turns out to be with the stuff that I'm throwing together. And eventually I'll see if I can bring it all together to look like it belongs together. But for now, mostly it's just me exploring Blender 2.8 and, and sticking to what I know, which is the modeling at this point in time. I should make a note that, um, so this last Sunday, it didn't want to work when I was in the um, texture paint mode. Um, yeah, so this I was working with this file, so it's already saved. This is the pepper, by the way. This is the pepper texture. <laughs> uh, this is cool. They 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 fixed this a few versions back. They got this to work, and that's the repeat function here. Um, it's always been available in two seven nine, um, but uh, now they got it to work here, and that's the repeat function for when you tile these, uh, when you're doing the paint mode. Right now, I am in the paint mode. Um, but I don't see my tools coming up. I'm in the smear draw, let's say. Um, down here, you can tile, obviously, when you're doing paint. And um, and they do the repeat mode, and it helps you lose the edges. You'll see them when you zoom out far enough. But um, a couple of tiles in, I can barely see the lines there. A couple of tiles in, um, not so much. It gets kind of lost. So anyways, that's the salt, the, the pepper let me get that repeat function off. That's what that's what that's what we were seeing initially. So I just created that to be the pepper texture. But um, it, what was happening is I wasn't getting the tools up here, and uh, they weren't coming up here. Also, when I'm checking it right now, by the way, just to see if it did that. If it does this, I keep using Shift Tab, which I just did that and it's wrong. It starts the player. 
so it's control tab to make it big and in this case um, when I went big like this um, I don't have the tools here and uh, really I need them over here and so now they're kind of lost over here so I need to work learn how to work with this um, more so the since I choose the tools now it comes up but I was having some trouble and I chose to wait on that uh, the reason uh, for waiting on that too is that if you if uh, the people that are watching these videos these 2.8 trials that I put up uh, last week I didn't do one because I did something with 279 but uh, um, two weeks ago I had mentioned and while I was working I'm gonna go and open a new um, 2d animation just to illustrate what I'm talking about here and I, I should say that I have two commenters that have already brought up the point is you know suggesting things that I can do to fix uh, the behavior I'm not sure that it's necessarily a behavior because it's it's a computer program but uh, but to show the behavior that when I choose certain tools in the what appeared to be the grease pencil I'm right now in the grease pencil uh, draw mode even if I go so in the draw mode it I'd lose these essentially so if I go back to this one now it's gone again unless I drag that and then maybe I get it back and then there's this over here I put in a uh, ticket so it's the first time I ever do that I put in a ticket for fixing this um, and it turns out to be a legitimate bug uh, with the program um, because what I found is that and I'm going to ruin my screen capture thing a setting here I do a screen capture this is the more information just just to let people know since these are 2.8 you know trials I'm testing 2.8 and all that I screen capture at dimensions of 1280 the uh, <laughs> doesn't even want to draw Oh, because I'm doing the fill I have boxes in there now uh, let me see so I I do the 1280 yeah it works 1280 by 720 pixels and so um, it's a small it's a small window is what I'm getting at and so when I make the window bigger I'm going beyond that and it can be seen right now that, it, that some of this tool panel is going to get lost as I drag it out now there's room and it appears but when when it is you know the window is shorter where it should be it does not and so that's uh, really after testing it a little bit um, you know in my spare time I, I noticed that that's the case and I put in a a, uh, a bug you know uh, yeah I did a bug report the first time I ever done something like that on it and I've already checked my emails and it seems like the it's the the blender developers have recognized that that's a bug that needs to be fixed and so it's gonna get fixed eventually I suppose so um, back to what I'm going to do since um, still I'm having a little trouble with the texture paint I'm gonna model so I'm gonna open the file that I saved on the 16th which has the salt shakers when I left this same scene off last time it was um, come on okay it did it is just faster it took faster than I mean I'm moving it faster than what is, re is responding so I did the salt shaker uh, there's the salt there's a couple of little changes that happen with uh, the setting here uh, maybe maybe not so much but this edge fading is the function that makes these um, makes these screen space refractions and reflections work um, and so it used to be another I think it was toggled a little different named a little differently but anyways I put it at zero so that way it doesn't get um, dull some of this stuff doesn't get dull because if I increase it it starts getting dull and uh, you can see it here with the bottle and so on at the edges of the screen and here we can see that some of that happening already over there so so essentially I just keep it at zero and hope my computer can handle it mm. so there's that so there's a ketchup bottle in this I duplicated the bottle and I created my pepper texture so I have my salt and my pepper and also without recording I took the time to do the same as the salt I did the pepper um, letters okay so today what I'm going to do is is work with the wire uh, uh, model with the Bezier curves so basically make a wire container for these so I'm gonna grab that one and um, 
grab shift Z just to move it out of the way maybe over here somewhere so it's not in the way and I'm going to take these and put them into a container there's still more stuff to do but I think I've already explored it enough in terms of modeling like a you know a container for the creamer a container for the sugar and stuff like that stuff that you would normally see at a restaurant and uh, later on I'll, I'll play with the colors um, oh I should mention I was saying this and I cut myself off I, I, I opened up a brand new file under the latest Blender version as of Sunday and I appended every one of these objects. That's why I'm missing the rest of the tables and the chairs. And I did that um, just to try to update um, so that I'm not carrying anything over from the previous files. And it seems to work fine. Um, and that was because the behavior of the computer was that you know, I would grab something, let's say that one, I'm grabbing a Shift Z to make sure it's on that plane, but then if I went Control Z, it wouldn't do the control, the uh, the undo, the Control Z. And um, so I said maybe it's just because of the versions of the files, or the file has been saved in different versions. So this is that's why it's it's all it's all bare bones again, <laughs> uh, as as opposed to what I had done previously. So I'm going to place the cursor there. Um, the axes are a lot brighter now. I see them; they're a lot brighter. Um, Maybe it's just a setting that I had changed previously in the other files, but I can really see them. So with the cursor there, I'm going to add an object. Um, and it's going to be a mesh. I'm going to do a cylinder. It's a huge one to begin with. Um, I'm going to give it eight sides. And um, I'll just scale it in edit mode. So scale it in to the size that I want. Mm, tab, Alt, G. I don't know why I didn't put the cursor in the center, even though I think I saw on the last blog um, from Pablo Vasquez was that I think they brought back that function right there, which centers the cursor. It's Shift C to center the cursor. Now they just got to bring back the function that says Alt Home. There used to be a function where you went Alt Home and it would center the cursor uh, like that. And it would make your view about that cursor. And it, all, it really helped because as you move back and forth in and out, right now I'm in, in the perspective mode and then so it, it's more noticeable that as you start moving over here and you start rotating, um, sometimes you know it's rotating off of a weird pivot point. And so the Alt Home, like right now, I'm zooming in too much. So now the rotation is off of a weird pivot point. So the way to fix that, the way to fix that usually is you select an object and you hit period on the number pad. And it centers the object that you have selected. The other option, because let's say you're in edit mode um, or, or just there's no object to select uh, because the object is bigger than where you're trying to pivot around, uh, you, in the... In the solid shaded view or in this render view, you put the cursor in one because it goes to the surface when you put the cursor like that. And then you hit Alt Home. I'll figure out, I'll look into it when I have time to see if that's a possibility to bring that behavior back because I like it. Um, I like the fact that they did, you know, they brought back the, you know, the Shift C for when you want to add an object uh, right in the center. Uh, like I just did right now. Anyway, back to that. Too much talking. So I think that's a good size right there, I think, to collect and put these on here. It's going to be one of those wire, um, wire, um, I'm using Alt to select there. I have a, I have an active vertex and I do have my snaps now with the active. I don't, I have to change this in the um, vertex in the active one. Okay, so grab Z and there that's the corner of the table so now it's on top of the table um, anyway and the table I think is right below the the zero zero point the origin point um, yes what I was getting at before I cut myself off was that I need a reference so let me save it save it as I also cleaned up a lot of the labeling for the collections for the stuff that I'm doing here um, let me hit the period on this so I can go... Okay, so I added it under... I added the object, the cylinder, under that one. Let me see what happens if I just drag it. So now I put it in the collection. 
which I could have also done over here by hitting um, in the object mode, move to the collection that I want. I don't want it in the camera collection. So, um, anyways, that drag and drop also works. It's pretty good. And rename it. I'm going to call it uh, holder. What is it? Uh, con holder. Okay. That's just, it's just good at this point, I think. I started with, you know, putting all sorts of planes and cubes, and then it gets messy, is what I'm getting at. So I need a reference. Um, to get a reference, uh, should I split the screen? Yes, I am. And then see if this works anymore. Shift F10. It does. Gets me to the viewer here. Now I'm going to open in... Uh... Okay, 2.8 trials is correct. Yeah, it still does that. I went all the way down, let go of the mouse, and it still brought it up because it's still... There's a bit of a lag with that, is what I'm getting at. Mm. There, I have to wait before I can go back. 2.8 uh, reference images hit here. So I downloaded a few images. I'm going to open this one. Uh, these both are essentially the same. Um, these are actually images for things that are for sale right now, so they have nothing to do with, uh, uh, you know, old vintage or whatever stuff, but this one looks nice. I can try to reproduce this, this one exactly, but I think I'm going to try to do my own swirl pattern. But essentially, it's two wires on top, a ring of wires on the bottom, I, I mean, a wire on top, a ring of wires on the bottom, and the Y shape with this wire over here. So it should be pretty easy to do that. Um, especially since on Sunday I did um, I did work with um, uh, excuse me I worked with uh, with the curves a little bit and uh, so the good thing is that you can see the wireframes now when you're working with them grab Z so I'm grabbing it making it lower I'm estimating again I started the player I'm estimating that um, it can't be too high, but it can't be too low either. So that's probably good right there. Maybe grab Z. I'm going to make it higher for me, my purposes. And that way the salt field fits in there all together. Mm. So that's it. I'm pretty much going to use those two white, two uh, rings on top and the bottom to create a wire, to create the wires. And I'm going to duplicate the top P selection. And then do the same shift duplicate P selection. And I'm just doing this off on the fly also. I haven't I haven't studied how I'm gonna do this exactly, but what I normally do, see how it works here. Let me go into the scale. So Z. I hit the scale instead of the Z. Um, the selection. So I have those two. That one and that one. Control join. Join. Shift H so I can see them. Or um, Control Save. I can move it to a new collection and I'm going to call this a temporary one. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what's the best um, or most efficient way to work with this. And the reason for that is I can I can turn off the collections then, for example. That's the collection. I turned that one back on. So now I have a temporary collection with that one. And maybe I can just shut off the collection. So if the way this under the way it was it was arranged, we used to have the numbers on the keyboard operate for the become there were like operators for the for the oh, layers. And so this is one, this is two, and this is three. So, so that it will allow me to basically go three, and I'm isolating and only looking at this one. If I hit Shift One, I bring that one back. It's just, in or uh, I have to keep that in mind, and and you know, remember that, and I can use that, so I don't have to be hiding and unhiding everything. I think I want that cylinder also to go move to. I can maybe I could hit three, see what it does. Did it do it? Three? No, it didn't. So one. Well, it moved it somewhere, <laughs> but it didn't move it. <laughs> Maybe create a new collection. Uh, a, a new collection that it, that I don't see. No, one, two, three. Okay. It moved it to two, even though I hit three. Maybe I, maybe I hit three. Let me go two. That one. 
move three. See what that does. No, that doesn't work. So it's it, it was always on two. I started it on two. So I have to select the temporary one. Mm. Okay, and I'm going to turn on. So I'm going back to three without the camera. Control save. Okay. So now I can select. So they're together. Um, it used to be Alt C. It doesn't do it anymore. I think it's W now. Nope, neither. So it's Object Convert to Curve uh, from Mesh, which is fine. It's not used that much, and it's, it's always a possibility to add them to the quick folder, the quick uh, picks, the quick picks. <laughs> Where did it go? I can't pick it now. Mm. All right. Let me go into the solid shading. Mm, that may not work, may not have worked altogether. Uh, let's see, um, it's here, but where is it? Let me tab in, they're there, it's there. Uh, they're not even closed, they're not closed off. Um, So I can't even select it. This is the condiment holder, the original one that I'm starting with. I'm going to hide it then. And um, I'm going to guess that maybe something is curves are on, visibility, uh, the collections. Well, let me turn them all on. I still don't see it. Okay, and then the overlays, let's see if that's something that is off. Mm. I'm going to hit wireframe, see what that does. Okay. Even though it's there, I'm selecting it, making sure it's selected. Okay, so that's exhibiting a behavior whereby it's not showing anything. Um, this is new to me. Um, on Sunday, I added a curve and it came out fine. Um, in this case, I have converted the curve. So I wonder if it's not even a Bezier curve. So let me see curve, uh, set spline types. I'm going to say Bezier tab. Still not quite. And as soon as I did that, so it must have been one of the other curve types, which I'm thinking it was an, uh, not an herb. Well, maybe an herb. Uh, okay, so it's there, but now I can't see it. And so let's see what happens if I give it a... Um, I give it a uh, full 3D and under geometry I'm going to give it a depth. So I can I can see it now but not before. Well, I'm going to create a new collection. Go into that one or rather highlight that one. I'm going to add a curve, a Bezier curve. So I should be in that collection with that Bezier curve and I could see it right there, it doesn't want to scroll up, just barely. Um, but there it is, that's the curve selected, but, and I hit the period, it should be there, but it's not there. And so I wonder if it's And I doubt that it's this, but I already have the uh, clip start very, 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 very low. And um, okay, I don't see it there. Let's go into the object uh, over here, that one. 
And let me see. Oh, viewport display right here. Uh, uh, name, axis, wireframe, texture space. Okay. That's... Mm, I'm trying to think if I Sunday I saw something like this or saw this kind of behavior and I did not. I, I just don't think I did. I did add a curve and I saw that it had the wireframe showing already when you make it a 3D curve with some thickness to it. Today though, it's not. And so it's there and I may be missing something. I'm gonna leave it at that. I may be missing something because as soon as I have it out of depth, I can see it. And I'm wondering if there's something else that I need, such as the handles, such as, so here's overlays. Outline, x-ray, shadow. I wonder. Cavity says show cav no. Hmm. So that's the same as me doing this and going to wireframe. And it's not there. As soon as I tab in, it's there. And here in the overlays, I should be able to turn off or take the handles, turn them off, or take the normals and get rid of them. We're making bigger so yeah I think that needs to be worked out I uh, um yeah I, I would have to study it more before I said okay this is something that needs to be you know um, reported as a bug or something like that make sure that I'm not completely missing missing the point as to what needs to be let me see that curve stroke bezier So you can choose a type right there by hitting that down. Okay, well, back to what I, what I was getting at, tab. <laughs> it's just that it's there, but it's not there. X, if I hit X, delete, yeah, the origin shows up and it's there, but it's just not there for me to see anyway. Um, and then collection four. Delete that collection altogether. I'm back in this one and the and that one. Make sure that I have it selected. Just have to deal with it because that's the way it goes. That's why I do these videos, these trial videos, Blender 2.8. Did I tab in or not? I should have it selected. Select. Oh, because it's not visible. Okay. So there it is. Maybe make it smaller. This is a typical work, you know, way that I work with Windows, uh, with Windows, with a Blender 279. I'll give my reference over here, and then I'll just continually be just, you know, going back and forth, back and forth. Um, so I can see where I'm going and where I am. This is obviously too thick. Going back to the curve um, settings here. I'm just going to use Shift, get it down more or less to where I think it's got to be. It needs, um, is it here? Resolution? Yeah, right there. I'm going to make sure it has 8. Because I'm going to subdivide this. So I started with 8. So I, I want to make sure it has 8 sides. So 2, resolution of 2 gives me 8 sides. Let me verify that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yes. Okay. And then that's a Bezier already. Even though, um, okay, there... They are straight, they're pointing at each other. What I can do is select them all. Let's see if that works. Alt A, A. Um, I'm gonna get rid of the, of the normals. That is over here. No, over here, in the normals. So I'm gonna go V, see if that works, and V um, aligned. Okay, not quite what I expected. Go into that v rotate. So I'm going to choose the individual origins. Not quite what I'm expecting or what I'm used to working with. So a little, little different. So I hope it doesn't take that much longer uh, to do this. Uh, let me see. Uh, I think it's this. No, yes, individual origins. 
Oh, cool. From this perspective, it looks like it's making an, a, uh, like an intertwined uh, rope. At least that's the way it looks like that right now. Hmm. Learning something new every day. I'm going to get rid of this one. So go shift link seven with the individual origins. I'm just going to try to get it close. I'm using the grid in the back just to eyeball it so that it's so that the handles are parallel with that one line there on the grid. So that should have get that, that should have given me a circle. Control invert to choose the other one. Seven. Um, oh, I forgot. Control Z. I forgot. For the sake of keeping rotate again. For the sake of keeping consistency, what I normally do is I hit this where I rotated it. Go here. It says a 22 degrees, 22.5. It was negative. Negative 22.5. Seems to get that. And then control invert. And then rotate those. And then just hit here, 22.5 so that they're consistent somewhat that's fine i could always just take one and duplicate it erase one in the bottom duplicate it, and so on control save so this is in the in in the temp folder um i need to see how it looks in together with the other stuff so i think I still think it looks a little thick right now um so duplicate it and move it to the first layer. I'm going to hit one now. Didn't move it to the first layer because it doesn't work that way. Okay. Three. Um, it should tell me here what I have. So that's... Yeah, yeah, because the curve is God knows where it is. I can't select it. Uh, that's the condiment holder so it moved it oh wait hold on a second this one it made it its own collection I suppose alt a select grab that's the one I believe that's the one that's duplicated already um, so move I can't really do so collection Okay, just a matter of getting used to this stuff. So it's back over here. Oh, one. Okay, so if I hit one, there it is. Because the computer should be fast enough, I'm going into the rendered view. And it's way too thick. Mm, I think I hit the wireframes, that's why I'm getting this right here. So in the overlays, get rid of that. Okay. I'm tabbing in, selecting everything, and going Alt S, and just making it smaller. Tab out. Okay, getting closer. A little big for the table too. These are, yeah, a little too big. So I'm getting closer in terms of the size. Um, move that one back to the temp. How come it didn't go? Mm. Is it in there? It's in there. But, so, hmm, okay. I just got to get used to that then. When I moved it into the first uh, layer, then it kept the object visible, kept the layer visible. So I'm used to it disappearing from this layer. But it kept the object visible. It's not until I went to the third layer that I can see it now. And and it's here. Oh, I need to go into the wireframe so I can select it. It's there. But um, so I gotta get used to that behavior. I'm not I'm not sure that that's 
exactly what was intended in terms of, of the, the way that it's supposed to behave. So it's a little big, is what I'm getting at. Actually, I don't need it. Take that one, tab in there, select everything, and then scale that one even more. Okay. Well, I'm used to using, I went like this to get the edges, I hit E, and I hope I didn't go into something. It doesn't really get you anywhere, okay. So it's two for edges, select the edges. I'm using Alt. There, selecting that. So I only have those, Shift, Duplicate. Selection again. Alt C, uh, no, you don't do the Alt C. I should have done the quick make, quick, uh, that one right there. Object, convert to curve from mesh. I'm gonna add it to the quick's favorites because I might do it again. Tab in there, or rather tab out. Now I'm confused. Did I just convert it or not? I think I did, right? Should be so, no, I haven't converted this one already. Quick favorites, convert. So there it is, now it's been converted. Uh, but I can't see it because tab in, curve stroke, bezier. Nope, that's, that's when you do a new one, I suppose. Um, let me see if this one gets you to convert uh, subdivise. Clear tilt, make. Set handle type. Here it is, Bezier. Bezier and then V. Aligned. Well, I think I'm going to refine what I'm doing here. Delete the vertices there. Link seven, rotate. Uh, negative 22.5, already gone through that. Shift duplicate in the Z and put it over here. That way I have a duplicate. Now tab, 3D type. Yeah, not being able to see it there is weird. Um, nope, right there. So it's full. Mm, very, very... The, let me see, 0 0.003, very kind of small threshold there where it changes to... move it to the first collection. Just so that it doesn't get, doesn't take all that room in the table. That's what I'm going over right now, grab. So if you put it at the very end here. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, but then it doesn't fit the objects. <laughs> Come on. Grab. Oh, that one may just barely fit in there. Can't grab that one. Yeah, they just barely fit in there. So obviously it has to be bigger. Can I duplicated those? Oh no, I haven't parented those, Control Z. I have not parented these objects together. Make sure I only have that. 
Control P object. Do the same for this. I'm selecting the cap and then this. C. Control P. Yeah, in the selection, I end up getting the stuff that's in the back, and I, it's a little annoying. So now I should be able to move. There. Move the shaker itself, it'll move everything. Okay, back to this one right here. So not quite. I'm not even sure why I'm duplicating that one anymore. So I'm going to scale it one and a half times. Scale, Shift Z, 1.5. Okay. Okay, go from there. And I'll go with the 0 0.003 wire weight tab. So I'm selecting that one, shift duplicate it, P selection, tab, back again, take that one, uh, quickies, get the quickies here, curve for mesh, and then make it full, again, uh, bevel depth, 0 0.003, that seemed to look fine, and that one was two. inside of it, um, W, it was uh, Bezier, and then with all of them already selected, it is V, aligned, 7, I still have my individual origins, where is it, here, yeah, individual origins, or rather, period, so I can choose the individual origins, rotate, negative 22.5 shift duplicate Z shift tab to get the snaps back okay now move that one over to um, the table just to see it again didn't want to do it because uh, it doesn't work that way I keep forgetting it doesn't work that way I moved it into nothing okay Three to turn that one in there. I actually turned it off. Right? Move to collection. I shouldn't even call it collection. So one's where I have the camera, the other one's a temporary one. What well, I'm gonna call this one scene. <laughs> scene collection's already up here. So um let me see. Not very creative. Um uh, uh I'm going to call it Scene Objects or Objects <laughs> Objects Object <laughs> Objects Okay Back into Man, for those people that look at the uh, videos that I put so far and say, yeah, you're so many minutes in and you got nothing so far Man, they're going to love this video <laughs> x delete it okay back to this seven i thought this would have been an easy one okay yeah that these will these will fit a lot better more stuff more stuff i think the wire thickness is good the only thing is that it might be kind of big for the table Where, yeah, uh, that's kind of kind of big. I can always make it smaller. And I stuck with the 0 0.303. I think I'm going to go with the point. Yeah, 0 0.03. I'll leave it at that. Just in case. It looks a little thick to me. So never mind. Again, I started the playback. And go 0 0.002. Just in appearances, and so then when I if I make this any smaller, or if I if I shrink these down, um, yeah, they'll be fine. This does look fine. Control save. Move it back to the temporary collection. Go to temporary collection here. In this view right here. 
Okay. I wonder what's going to happen if I take this one and I go control two tab in here. Select that edge and that edge and just control bevel ever so slightly. I want to see if it rounds it out fine. It does seem to round it out pretty fine, pretty well, I mean. And scale and the Z a little bit more. And scale shift Z. Kind of hard to see, but what I'm looking for is that it's in the middle of this scale shift Z. The edge. Right there. Control save tab. So it's a cylinder that's on the edge of this. Why? Because I'm gonna see if I can do the curve. So I'll do the curve in this way right here. So tab in there. I'm gonna hold shift. Now what do I wanna add? I'm thinking what do I wanna add? And I don't wanna add a curvy like that one. That's just, it's going to be the same. I thought about maybe doing a repetitive pattern like but the wallpaper pattern is not even that good something to re be repetitive of a theme but not really so um, let me just try to get a little creative here see if I can come up with something what if I went like this oh what's happening okay so I'm in there right now if I if I do shift, okay, I'm expecting it to be able to draw, and I can't. What is this tool? Annotate. Let's see. Okay, so here's the draw tool. Okay, I'm used to just hitting shift, and that's what I was doing. I was hitting shift and going, so I, have to, I have to get the tool from here. Okay, like that. So I'm going back to cursor. No, it's actually the selection box. Because if I put the cursor, I might actually move something mistakenly. So here I get to do this fun part here. Make sure that they all fit. More or less where they should. like a figure eight go back to the draw the tilt and I use that one it says the tilt says tilt selected control vertices okay so what so for example I have that vertices and I go tilt oh okay yes um, yes, there is a shortcut for that already. <laughs> I forgot. I think it was Alt-T. Alt-T or Control-T? No, Control... Yes, it was Control-T. Um, okay, so I'm familiar with that one as well. What's this one? Extrude and Extrude Cursor. Okay. Well, that would be like this and Control... Boom. That's Control Cursor. Control Z. And the other one is Extrude, which is just the E. Or you extrude, control Z. 
Okay, I'm just exploring some of these tools over here. So the tools, they, you know, they, which also come up when you hit the space bar, because I selected that. They're pretty much what I'm used to. So maybe I can get what appears to be like a figure eight, like they want to come together to a figure eight. There, an infinity figure eight. All right, now, I'm going to draw, um, instead of that, I'm going to draw one that goes like this. Mm, I, <laughs> I ran out of tablet, ran out of space, but the point is to get out like this. All right. Oh, this was just to get started, by the way. So I really, oh, rather Alt A to deselect everything. Link, link, and then P selection. Tab out, tab into that one. That's that I I usually do that just so I don't have to add another curve. So makes it easier for me. Hmm. Have to be quick. This is, is functioning the same way as do the pie menus, where if you go tab and you're still holding it and you move the cursor, it's going to go to whatever it is that you drop it off at. Or just don't move the cursor, which is hard for me because I have the pen, because it's always jittering a little bit, and then and click that one. All right. And control X. I don't need that one. Yeah, the cursor for whatever reason changes to a pen. Okay, and so the idea is that this is going to run into is going to run into over here as well. So let me control link to get that shift duplicated in the Y. No, did I hit Y or Z? Y, X rather. Yeah, kind of far. It's kind of far from where it should be, all the way over here. I'm going to join those. So by just hitting F, then hitting that one in control. So I'm just joining that one, scale in. Close enough. Okay, control X. There you go. So I want the appearance that it wants to come this way, but it actually jumps back up that way. And um, it's going to meet that one, and then the cycle repeats. Over and over. So that point is the same as this point. This fine. Control X. I got rid of those. So this is what needs to repeat over and over. I have one, two vertices in here. So I can play, play with these face F to fill it in.
I'm trying to make sure I have an even space here through here that it touches up there and that that um, that these that these right here don't come and cross into each other because they may it's not going to look right that's the same kind of condition that's happening here which can be fixed by just scaling that up a little bit so they don't right there same here scale just a little bit maybe maybe not or rather grab that one there where they separate grabbing both of these now so it touches keeping that space uh, these are already okay this one looks like it touches down here okay this is not okay scale in scale that one in too but probably I should just move this one Um, right there, rotate it just a bit, Kind of an ugly design, huh? Control save. So that's what I've got so far. See how that looks as it repeats over and over. So these never really touch. There's like a little pattern there. Okay. Let's see what happens. Seven. So it's near the top. Grab in the Y. Control save. Might not even come out the way I expected. Or maybe I need to make them thinner. So, um, object, convert. I'm going to add that to the quickies as well. The quick picks. So the quick picks. There. Select that one. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay. Uh, I am in the temp folder, right? Uh, yes, I am. I think I'm in the temp folder. Temp <laughs> cabinet. <laughs> temp box. It's a box. It's one of those uh, boxes for, for file folders. That's why I'm like looking at the temp folder. Uh, okay. I'm going to duplicate that one. And then it should still be selected. And then, yeah, the selection there changes because it's right on top of each other it looks orange. Uh, tab in, so it's there. Uh, quickie mesh. Um, oh, control Z, control Z that, control Z that all together. So I should have two curves. I'm looking to see if there's anything, and I don't recall if in the 279 there was something that indicated with this, wh whether this is a curve. Uh, in, in this view right here, without having to go to see that it's a curve here, or that here, because this changes with what you select. Like for example, that one, boom, now you know it's a, not, it's a uh, mesh versus a curve. So boom, now you know it's a curve. So both are curves. Um, I have a duplicate one, but what I needed to do was get rid of this altogether, back to zero. All of, both of these. So now I don't see it all together because it's it, it's disappeared, right? But I know it's still selected. Go quickie and mesh from curve. So now I should have a line uh, with vertices selected. A line that represents the 
um, the point, the, the curve, the points on the curve. Now I'm going to take that one and see if this works. I haven't used it here before, but I'm going to take a modifier, add a modifier, and it's going to be a shrink wrap. Uh, solidify where shrink wrap. Boom. And I'm going to shrink wrap it to that object right there. I can already see the effect is shoving it, you know, giving it that curvature. And um, there's going to be some warping, obviously, that happens. I can try to do a projection. If I go, let me make this bigger. If I choose this and I go project and let me hit the 7 on the number pad. So this is projecting the Y. Positive and negative. No. Nope. Oh, yeah, there it is. I can see it. Tab. So either or is going to have a, a warping effect. And not only that, this one over here, this cylinder, it's uh, W smooth shading. I'm going to choose the see if that that doesn't really have an effect. I'm going to go up. I'm going to go up four. Hopefully, it doesn't break the computer. Just to give it a smoother curve there. So it's projecting onto the cylinder. It should be halfway in. Let me take that one and hide it. Control save. Just so that I can see what it looks like. Hmm. I could almost do this instead. Instead of doing this, let me see if this works. If I, instead of doing a projection, just nearest surface point. Uh, that's where it, where it comes out initially, right? Nearest normal target, normal project. So the target is the cylinder. The normal is because I gave it so many subdivisions. That's probably going to be the best one. And it's projecting down into that one. And I wonder if I add now an array modifier. Okay, it's arraying that one, but... Shift C to center the cursor. Shift Add. I'm gonna add an empty. I hope this works here because I haven't done this with this version yet. An empty, just a sphere. It's big somewhere out here. Seven. Now, um, that's a little object that I'm working with there. I want to array it. Array it along around this object. Use this object right here for. Did it find it? The empty. It did. Hmm. I'm trying to remember how I did it last time, and I've done it. I've done it with two seven nine, and I'm missing something here. Not very obvious to me right now. It's not coming to to mind. So you want to merge them. Uh, fix count. Um, fit length apply. So here you put the count relative offset. No. You have to select object offset. <laughs> okay, object offset around the empty. Hmm. The reason for that, I think, is that the empty and this one are not in the same spot. So with that one there, I hit W, I think it's under there. Um, no, it's not. Keyframe, parent snap, no. It's 
not under here, set. Uh, yes, it is set, object origin. Origin's a 3D cursor. So now the empty and the object have the same Z. Yeah, that behavior doesn't seem right. So array. It arrays it more and more towards the center. I think I remember doing a spiral with this once. Fix count, fit curve, fit length. It's a, I think it's gonna be a fixed count. Not a constant offset. Rotate in the Z. Does it have a scale applied, I wonder? No, there there is a scale. It's one and a half. That's why it's doing that. So with that one selected, I'm gonna go all day. No, wrong one. Uh, all day is to deselect. Select that one again. Control A, apply, scale. Okay. So, back to the new the, the, the newbie uh, mistakes. It always happens because you can't remember possibly everything because I, I just don't know how they do it, the people that do, that do do it. So, Right now, I'm just trying to see that they that they come together right there. Rotate Z smoothly. Okay, they do. They do come together. Now I have to increase the count. Didn't get it got it there and hopefully they'll fit without having to scale no okay here's where I'm gonna have to get a little creative because I didn't do any math to figure out you know make sure that it's part of it so just selecting that one right there I'm going to go into the edit mode and scale it in the X off of its uh, medium point. Okay. Just scale a little bit. Now, take the object and rotate that in the Z a little bit more. I'm going to go past it a little bit and guess that I have to scale it down. Rotate in the Z. Very, very close. Pretty close toward the end, but in the beginning it's not so much. Here, seven. Since I started from here and worked this way, here's where it's not so much. 
I wonder what would happen. Let me save this right now. Take that, because it's kind of big, cumbersome to work with. And scale that one in, <laughs> create a spiral. That's awesome. Awesome way to create a spiral. And then grab it in the Z. And there. Control Z. Just exploring kind of a couple things. Let's scale it some more, even more, and even more. Just so I can grab it there while I'm working with this. What happens if I go Alt A, scale? Okay. So I basically worked with the empty. I scaled down the empty so I can, so it's not a bunch of lines going all over the place. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Now, you know what? I also want to see this in. Control save in in some sort of um, what do you call it um, solid view because if I go into the solid view right now I can't really see it so I wonder what happens if I duplicate this again so both of them should have there. I'm gonna hide that one since I already it's already served its purpose. There. Both of them should have the modifiers. I'm checking that. So I'm gonna choose one of them. And what happens if I go quickie, quickie peaks, and go curve from mesh and in its properties, go back up to point um 0 0.02, I think it was, zero, 0 0.02, and two of them. Okay, it's going to be super dense, super tight, but I should be able to then see it like this. Um, resolution preview. In the wireframe. Okay, so it kept them as a, the polyline is a, uh, it's a nerves, I guess, or the polyline type, curve, rather W, set line type, so it must be a poly right now, it's what it is, which is fine, because I'm just using it to preview, preview what I'm going to get. I forgot to hit the full, full 3D, still kind of small. I can almost say that I'm done with that. Now, since it still has the modifiers, going back to the modifiers, oh, when I, con when I converted it, it added the modifiers. So it uh, applied the modifiers. So I can't do that. There. So there's still a little something to be worked out right here. And all the way over here. So I gotta select the curve one. The, not the curve, the um, There. Select that one again and get rid of that one. So tab in again. Scale X. Tab out. Select the empty, rotate Z, close, 
rotate Z with the shift down. That looks close. And this looks closer. Smoother. Looks like waves. Tab in again on this one tab. Scale X. Tab out. I think it looks smooth enough now. Let me hide that. And then just select it so it highlights. That looks smooth enough to me now. Okay, duplicate that one again. Do the quickie. Quickie, uh, mesh from curve. Oh. Okay. Or curve, was that curve from mesh or mesh from curve? Which one did I do? Control Z. No, I forgot which is which. If I grab it and it's together, that one. X, delete it. Now there's that one. Grab it. That one's the one that I want to mess with. Tab out. Duplicate it again. Quickie, I want to curve from the mesh. Okay, and that one is totally hidden now because of the way that Blender is behaving right now. But it's in there somewhere. <laughs> Which one is it? Let's see. Not that one. That one's hidden. It's going to be this one. Nope. It's going to be that one. Full. 0 0 0.002 2 Okay Well, you know what? I was going to make it bigger. I was planning on doing thinking that this is going to fill it in if I go but not really. It's too much of a gap. It is too much of a gap. So that's not right. So I should be scaling this one. Scale in the Z. Oh, nice pattern. I think that pretty much does it. I can always take these and bring them down too. Okay. So that's because it was 0 0.003, I think. So shift duplicate it again. Make it a curve from a mesh. Uh, make it full. 0 0.003 and 2. That looks smooth enough. They seem to touch. I can always move these around. And I think that's how it's going to work. That is still a curve, I think. It's still a curve. So duplicate that. And the quick picks, choose mesh from curve, and then that one there, the quick picks, choose mesh from curve. 
that's the mesh. No, I'm trying to isolate the ones because they're all on top of each other. So that's the curve. Hide that. That's the mesh. The only one that's there. Okay. Control join. So that's a mesh of all the stuff. Very, very dense around here. I could always do some work to get rid of some of these points. But that's fine for me right now. W shade smooth. Okay. Now I'm going to take um, this one, move it to the scene objects. I'm not sure how best to call that. Control save. I just went into the render view. It's going to take a little while. There, that's the render view. All day. It's a little big. It's white. I was going to make it black. I could make it white. Actually, I should make it yellow. See what it looks like. Yellow. Control save. Let me see what time. It's one hour, 20 minutes. I'm still working with this shape because I'm making it up from scratch. And um, yeah, there's time. The rings are just concentric. I can always just take the same ring, scale it over and make it. And then the other, the other wire should be simple enough to do as well. Um, let me give it a material real quick. Nothing here is real quick. Go to the shading. Going into the render view here. And with that one selected in the materials here, add a new one. Push home so we can see it. I'm not even going to bother getting the node wrangler or anything because I'm going to just work with the color. Well, let me just cheat. Well, maybe see. Oh, you know what? Here. I'm going to zoom into here. Let me hit the 5 on the number pad. So we can get in close like that. And for the color, let me save. Control save. For the color, I want something close to that. See how that looks. Not very good. Okay, so then for the color, I want something close to that. Neither. How about that one? Oh, I'm going to stick with the yellow then. That looks pretty ugly. <laughs> like a greenish yellow. Not working out very well, huh? Well, let's go with even uglier. And uglier. Might be better, because it goes with the, that at least goes with the tile floor. <laughs> okay, and I want it to look, uh, that actually looks okay. Let me give it some clear coat. So it looks like it's painted wire. There, control save. It looks kind of big, but then again, the stuff doesn't fit in there. Save again, back to the layout. Yeah, it looks huge <laughs> compared to this one. This one looks tiny, but you never, there's no scale here. Nothing to compare the scale. Okay, so back in layer three, um, yes, I can save, I can save all this stuff. Let me Alt-H, Alt-H to make sure <laughs> it unhides, when you do Alt-H, it unhides everything. So back into layer three where everything's unhidden there. 
Let me close that because I need more room. Um, so I already saved everything that I need. I wonder, did I convert it or not? Yeah, those are those are curves. So tab in there. Link that. Shift duplicate. Scale them in. This is just an eyeball. Shift duplicate. Scale it in. Shift duplicate again. Scale in. I forgot. I think if you go Shift Duplicate, Scale, and then you go Shift R, 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 R. Too many. <laughs> Too many of them. Uh, let me see how many I can get rid of. This one only has the edge one, one, two, three, four, and then a very tiny one in the, in the middle. So scale that one in for the tiny one in the middle. Alt A, link, 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 X, the vertices, one, two, three, link, X. Mm, maybe it does need another one somewhere in there. Link, scale it in. Alt A, link, scale it out. Shift, duplicate, scale. There. Control, save. Alt, A. Link, 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 link. That means I'm pushing the L, by the way. Link. Separate those. Duplicate that. I shouldn't have separated I should duplicate it first and separate it. But, oh well, more objects to mess around with here to get, to take, to take into account. Move to the scene objects. So here, join them. <laughs> if I do C over here, it won't, it won't undo them. And if I put uh, give her that one. Oh, come on. Okay, at least there's that one. So I'm going to hide and hide and hide. That's the floor, too. Control join. I gave me, it gave me a message. Because there's no data, because these are not curve. This is still a curve. Quickie mesh from curve. This one's going to be super dense right here. I'm not sure I want it that way. Mm. I'm going to select this one, tab in here. A. I'm going to select every other one. And then control X. Okay. So quickie mesh from curve. Now control join. I just put it back into the render. There's that. Now I need to put the wires that come up. Okay. Back into the solid mode. Go into the third layer. I'm going to create another one. I'm going to call it 
Uh, that one's temporary, so this is temp two, just so I don't have to deal with a, a lot of stuff now. Because that one has served its purpose. Move to temp two. Okay, that one also. And what well, was that? The curve one? No, that's the vertex one. Move temp two. And um, hmm, which one's the one that has all the modifiers? This one does not. Mm. I wonder if I lost the one that has all the modifiers. Anyways, wrong one. I want to send the empty in that one. Moved attempt two, and then I hit the three. So basically, while hitting the three, I isolate that because the four has got all the junk. The three has the wire, and it should have the curve as well. No, here's the curve somewhere. Oh, these are both curves. Okay. Control join. It's okay, they were joined already. So here I need to go into the front view. inside of it in the wireframe with nothing selected I'm going to draw um, well I'm just going to draw a line up to start like that and then scale X 0 enter make sure that they're on X equals 0 Z, that varies, that's fine. Back to the selection here. Why does it keep the cursor as a pencil? Selection box. There. A little bit of a lag in changing that stuff. Make sure, control X, get rid of that one. This one doesn't need to have that many points going up, it's just a straight tube. Well, I'm going to keep one in the middle, just for the curve that I'm going to have to add. Five. Make sure it's ortho. Grab in the Z. Grab Z. When I pull these handles, just by the way, when I pull the handles, is because I'm trying to evenly space some of these. Notice how they get spaced. Grab Z. They get spaced. So if I put it real tight, I'm going to have, you know, unnecessarily some really small sections in there. And that can be changed by changing here. Changing that right there. So I got 12 divisions in that, which is I'm leaving it as that. Fine. Because I'm not subdividing it anymore. I'm just keeping it like that with the smooth shading. This last handle here doesn't matter. Grab Z. Control L to get them all. Grab in the X. Nope. Shift duplicate X. So I'm going to just go a distance that I think might work. And I went 0.03. Now, L to link that, grab X, negative, it was 0 0.03, so it's 0 0.015 to center them back. Okay. Oh, they happen to coincide, be very, very, oh, they happen to be right on that circle. <laughs> period. I just selected that vertex there, and I'm going to hit the period on the number pad, so it centers it, and now I can pivot around that. That's great. That's where I need to be. Okay. So there, that's coming up like that. Um, now how am I going to make this? <laughs> uh, let me see. Let me see. Shift, snap. I want the cursor to the point here because I'm just going to draw it. Draw it and work with it. So 
So it's two circles like that. Control X, face, F to join them. Control X for that one too. Too many points. Too many points needed. So now I'm just going to eyeball the, the curve superimposed. There's a way to do this. I think it still works if I choose some of these and I do the, I think it's uh, shift alt s, uh, uh, c, sorry, to circle, but no, it's okay. They have variances. When you see these, these in real life, they're not perfect either because it's wire that's been wound around a tube or something. So, adding that little extra, you know, difference there is fine. So F to join them, and then Control X that one. That's this one right here, a little too much. Yeah. They basically have to look, and I can use the grid to try to help me. They have to look more or less similar. The curve points, I mean. See how they're in the same there, more or less. Now, that one's... I'm not going to put them right on top of another because I need to be able to discern them. Mm, I wonder if I want to put two. I do. Control plus. No, that doesn't work. It doesn't. It does work. C, get rid of that one. And put this one right around here. Control plus. I didn't have it selected. Control plus. C, get rid of that one. And then W subdivide. I could have also done one circle duplicated and split it if I wanted it to be m much more perfect. Okay. I still don't know why I can't get rid of that drawing cursor. Full save. Hmm. I wonder if I tab out and tab back in, maybe set that up. So I'm going to go control plus, plus, plus. There, that many. By using the circle deselect, I deselect those. Grab in the Y. Seven. Okay, where's my circles grab in the Y? So that one's going to be to this side of it. Now I can easily select these. Seven. Grab in the Y. Bring these very close together. Not all the way because that's where they put the little card. It gives you the specials, the specials for today. And the special for today is 
a lot of blendering. Seven. Now that's the one near the bottom, right? Rotate that one a little bit more and try to center it. Okay. Grab Y just a little bit that way and then grab Y a little bit this way. There. That's it. They're not perfect. The ones that you see at the stores or whatever. I want it to be probably too much of a tangent section right there. So that is this point. The front view. No, rather that. That could be this point right here. Just too far out there. So I can scale that one in a little bit. this one to scale in a little bit control save okay so that's done and the idea is that they come all the way together here grab these two go in the front view grab Z I'm gonna bring it a little bit past tab Okay, control save. That's good. So that needs to be filled in. Those two bottom layers need to be filled in, or maybe they won't even be seen. Uh, faces, I mean, it's going to be open faces when I convert it. Um, and then it only needs the the last thing that's left is the three that are that are the the three. Um, Alt A wires I suppose just draw a wire from uh, I keep going to my old habits draw um, probably from here okay now scale X zero enter hit the end to get this back up here and then make sure it's at zero in the one view where is it it's up there somewhere. So let me get back to my box. Grab Z. Bring it down here. How come? Oh yeah, because it's in it's in the view where there's a section that you just don't see as thickness. Okay, so I'm gonna rely on this view right here. Grab Z. And wherever I see that it starts clipping, just ever so slightly, I stop. Okay, this one, I think I can get rid of that one and only have two. There, scale. That one doesn't have any. Okay, control. The handles are gone. They're completely scaled into themselves. If I scale it like a bunch of times, it's scaling against zero. So pretty much that's useless. Uh, control Z, 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 Z. There. So I'm going to get rid of that one then. Control X. Grab in the Y. So it sticks out. Seven. Okay, last thing to do is to rotate this. Well, not the last thing, but close to the last thing. Control L to make sure I have that one. I'm going to rotate it to make three. No, I want to go off again. Shift C, make sure I'm off the cursor there, off the center, and then rotate period first to go to the 3D cursor, rotate it, no, rather shift 
duplicate, rotate, and it's going to be, um, so I want three, that's 360 divided by three. So 120, enter, and then shift R, just to do the same thing over again. And that's it for that. Okay, so, um, control save. I have, I have a couple of things I need to transfer over. So that's that one. And that one and that one should be the whole loop and everything then I need to go over to to the to the first layer so first I'm going to duplicate them here inside of the edit mode P um, so P selection separate I only get one option now. I'm not even, not even paying attention <laughs> when I do that anymore because I'm glad it's working the way it used to, right? Um, tab out of that. In there, there, there's the object. Move it to the scene objects collection, my first collection. There. Now it's together here. Um, Q for my quick picks and mm, mesh from curve. Correct. And then uh, go through this again. <laughs> Alt, -A. Alt A. That one, that one, and that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. No. Go through this whole deal again. That one and that one. Control join. Tab in there. I need to do this because I will know. See, there's way too many anyways. A lot of these, I don't need them. The, these subdivisions, they're just adding, you know, uh, vertices, data to the to the file. Some in here as well. In these, in here. And I wondered, like, for example, if I were to hit link and then go, uh, where is it? Select. Uh, maybe do a checker, deselect. Uh, is it working here? Um, I don't see that it's having any effect. Mm. Mm. Nope, I don't see it having any effect whatsoever. You'd already start seeing certain things. Um... That's too bad. <laughs> I hate to be the. I don't want to be uh, the guy. I'm. I was planning on giving it the a week or something before I opened another file. I mean, I downloaded it again and uh, and see if it works. Uh, uh, certain things work. Uh, like for example, this curve. It doesn't. It isn't it, a curve object. Just a simple thing. Curved object is not seen visible. So it's, I think that's a bug. That's obviously a bug because you can see it in the other uh, version of the program, the previous version. And I was thinking, well, that's yeah, a bug. Maybe I should see if I can go to the same reporting. It wasn't that hard anyway uh, to go to the reporting process and say, hey, look, there's you, you can't see it. But I don't want to be that guy that's just like, oh, this is this. This is pretty soon they're going <laughs> to can't stand. They'll be like, I can't stand that guy. He's constantly bu uh, you know, bugging us with bugs. Uh, uh, and it's easy to do when you're just the user, right? Um, can, can you imagine the developers? Like, they're working hard, and it's like, everything is a problem. Uh, I don't know. Anyways, what I was getting at is that I will know that that is not closed in. So I'm going to F to fill it in. Likewise there, F to fill it in. Actually, I should select both and then do a little... Well, I'm not subdividing it, so I'm going to leave it as such. I was going to subdivide them. I'm going to add a, I was going to add a bevel, but I don't need to. This is not subdivided. And likewise for these. F. F. And then over here as well. Now, for somebody that already knew that we're going to be doing this, it would have been better to convert it first, do that, do this, and then r r rotate it, right? See, I didn't know that. I mean, I I knew it, but I didn't plan it, I guess. 
I didn't plan it correctly. So back to the render view. Okay, there. There's my wire for wire holder. It's in red. It goes with the tiles. I like it. I'm not sure that I'm going to keep the tiles anyways. So, and then as for the design, eh, it's, it could be better, but it looks kind of thick. If you look at this one, this is also too thick for my taste. Maybe a thinner one with more stuff. <laughs> but, um, anyways. If, and then I can save this and use it in, you know, for something else, if I ever need to. So, Alt-H to unhide everything. Hit 1 to make sure I'm back and only in this one. Um, oh, I forgot. Okay, now I'm going to hit this one only. I'm going to tab. I'm Shift H just so I can see it in the, uh, rather the wireframe, in the wireframe. Uh, what am I doing? I'm looking for the very bottom. point. That one. That one. And that one. See, they're not visible through, they're not visible through, through the, the even though it's got the dithering and everything. So I'm gonna go control nine. Doesn't work. What? Is it control nine? Shift nine. Control nine. Nine, at least. So nine works. So seven top nine. If you were at one and you go control nine, it doesn't work anymore. One is the front, three is the side. Control three should be the other side. Control one should be the back. So I guess maybe it was never nine, never control nine. Seven, control seven. 7 and 9. All these numbers that I'm hitting on are on the number uh, pad. On the number on uh, numbers on the number keypad. So it's just 7 and 9. 7's seven's, seven's the top, 9's the bottom. That's what I wanted to see. Make sure that they're the very lowmost point. The lowermost points. Shift, snap. The cursor to selected. Tab. Now uh, w rather um, set the origin origin to 3d cursor okay now alt h and then one just so i can see that right and here i can do it in in the uh, in the solid shading grab i'm gonna grab that one right there grab z and with the snaps on, it's on top of the table now. In other words, the bottom of those need to be touching the table. And they are. I just went to the front view and then they are. I could have just eyeballed it too. That's fine. Okay, so seven. The top view, grab it. Get rid of the snaps shove to the back here. Maybe I should have done a square one. You know, most restaurants have a square one. So I'm going to hit Alt-Z. No, that doesn't work. <laughs> Wrong button, buddy. Uh, it's not... I'm looking for Z. I think it's that one. Yes, the look dev. Which is the same as, is pretty much the same as that, right? But maybe a little faster. Wow, it's got a lot more occlusion happening here. I like this one better. But I was hoping maybe I could. No, that's not helping me out. This is where it's gonna be better. Grab Z. So it looks like it's on top of that. And then that one, grab Z. That one's gonna be difficult because it's got little stands on the bottom. What? 
am I seeing there that looks odd? There's a dithering or something that's happening here as well. They're too close. The objects are too, too close. Grab Shift Z. My computer is actually having trouble with this. Now I can see it in the recording as well. Mm. Preferences. And it should be... I'm checking the preferences. And... Um, the system so it, it already had this one I, I don't recall setting that one <laughs> um, control save this one is looking worse right now and I'll select that one grab shift Z put it somewhere in here grab shift Z and put it somewhere in here mm. yeah this kind of stuff right here what is it I'm not sure what it is it's it's the it's in the ortho which is very very exaggerated but still in the perspective one grab Z me perfectly I'm just gonna copy that and then put it on that there um, since it's hiding the vegetable paste grab shift Z I'm gonna put these over here doesn't really want to behave when it's let me go into the ortho Grab Shift Z. Okay, again, grab Shift Z. Shift Scale. Grab Shift Z. G Shift Z. Rotate Z. Period to get the medium point. Rotate Z. Just to give them a little. Rotate Z. Now, yeah. like that. Rotate Z. Just so some of that shows up. And in the camera view. Control save. Did it do it? Yes, it did it. Now I'm going to hit an F12 just to see what that looks like. In terms of time also. <laughs> it rendered everything. That looks good back there. It rendered everything that's in here in the junk layers. Um, looks pretty good. It was 15 seconds. And it looks good to me. I mean, after all the stuff that, like, it'll take minutes for uh, cycles. So I'll get out of the zero again, go five. Um, Grab Shift Z. Not sure that the ashtray now goes with this whole thing, right? This is actually a little tall. A little tall and a little big. If I were to take this and scale it down. looks better like that mm. 
Yeah, I'm not sure what this what I'm seeing here. It's in the ortho view. If I go into the five, it seems to mitigate that. But even though I saw it a little bit, and I see some of that happening right now. Okay, so everything fits in this scale. Then it's not so tall up here. And I could put a little card here that has the specials, the daily specials. And it doesn't look that big. Grab, shift, Z. Rather rotate in the Z like that. So I'm going to shove it back there because I don't want to be responsible for people that want to pick up smoking. And so I'm in the perspective. Now I'm going to call it good right there. This is it. This is the modeling session. That's a little bit big maybe. That's okay. I'm going to have to make a card that goes in there. Um, let me get rid of the overlays and close that one. Get rid of the top bar. Found a little glitch today. Not a glitch, but like a bug. And um, next week, I think if I download it and it has something similar, I'll just I'll report it. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure that other people have picked up on that already and reported that. So with that said, thank you for watching. This is the modeling session for today. I think it was it was fun for me. It was long too. It's the, it's we're about at two hours or more, uh, just about at that threshold. But thank you again for watching. Um, I like the outcome for this, um, at least as a product. This is probably a little too big, but as a product that I could also use, you know, for something else, also if I wanted to. And it's looking good right now so far. Maybe not so much here, the dithering that's back there. But I'm sure playing with some more of the settings there in in the uh, for this uh, EV settings, some of that can be fixed, hopefully. Oh, or there's always cycles. Well, thank you for watching once again, and good night.